Oh, I got books. Hold on for you. Just one second. Are you picking up? Are you picking up that noise in the background? All right, Dan. Uh, we're recording here. I don't hear any background noise. I'm good. doing good. Um, yeah, you had uh, an idea here to talk about time immemorial. Well, let's tell you just take that. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, you know, when you look at the, you know, what we've been discussing so much in the research regarding what was the institution of uh, the use of legal surnames onto the population uh, in around, uh, you know, after the time of the Norman Conquest, uh, we're kind of looking at periods of 1086 forward uh, and then into the around the 1200s, they started to kind of pick up a bit. Uh, there was uh, uh, we kind of consider that or say the, the world considers the legal world considers that legal memory kind of begins from that time forward um, because the. Uh, uh, the system itself was certainly in a legal sense, and those that were, uh, you know, going to operate in contrary uh, to free grace or the recognition recognition of the greatest event, which would have been the uh, the fulfillment of God's will by the death of Christ, which canceled out all legal indebtedness, ended any concept of what we would seem to uh, work with legal legal being kind of like the old dispensation that Samuel Johnson defined in 1755 under legal being the old dispensation, the old covenant before the new covenant came into uh, bringing relief for what the old covenant could not do. Uh, so uh, when you're looking back at around that, that 1200 period, um, the legal monarchies, those that were going to govern those who are not going to be ready uh, for the relief and the remedy of the Son of God and what he provided, what do you do with that population other than leave them in legal bondage and come up with a legal schematic? So their fulfillment of that, because uh, prior to that, there was a lot of registration going on. A lot of people were just not uh, being recorded anywhere. Uh, many people even uh, had the same first name. But uh, in order to really start doing what they would do for the census, taxation and the draft they needed to start to block them up into like a little bit of like a legal tribal idea uh, a legal surname institution was going to work well for that so they uh, uh, they brought in the institution of legal surnames and that's when we kind of start legal memory at least prior to that uh, you know time immemorial in the concept of how far back do we go which is almost what common law would have done Common law, goes, common law goes back as far as you can, uh, you know, think. And, and so, therefore, it would have taken in uh, the event of Christ prior to that, and it would have gone all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And so, therefore, uh, when we're talking about time immemorial, this is just a, a definition you'll find on Wikipedia. It says time immemorial, of course, it's Latin, uh, is a phrase meaning time extending beyond the reach of memory record or tradition indefinitely ancient ancient beyond memory or record the phrase is usually in legally significant context as well as in common parlance uh so anyways uh and then it says in law or which we really should say in legal because you know it's confusing when we use the word law when we're talking about legal because people confuse that with being god's law but uh, in law, time immemorial denotes a period of time beyond which legal memory cannot go and time out of mind. Most frequently, the phrase time immemorial appears as a legal term of art in judicial discussion of common law development and in the United States, the property rights of Native Americans. So you can just do a little bit of research on that, but we kind of kind of have this legal memory or what we're using uh, for this institution of legal state surnames coming into that period just shortly after the Norman Conquest. And when you really look at it, it's almost like where uh, two separate entities the uh, of power, uh, the Roman Catholic power uh, from the former Roman Empire, uh, along with the uh, English monarchy, had joined together in consort in around the 700s and then they, because the English monarchy had converted to Catholicism, and then the Church of England, basically, as defined as its uh, uh, 
Uh, its constitution is a branch of papal Rome, so they're still part of it. They're just protesters, but they fight over control, over jurisdictional uh, power, over the people. But they're in bed together in essence because they they still believe in the same uh, doctrines, the same false doctrines. Yeah, um, Dan, I just wanted to interject here. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, a lot of people out there are thinking, oh, I want a common law court and stuff like that, right? In their, in their pursuit for knowing something's not right, right? And they're knowing this admiralty court exists out there and blah, blah, blah. But what from you were just describing here is that originally in the merger, right, that has taken place in that legal system is that originally there were no surnames in common law. But you cannot get into a court of common law, supposedly, even if without a surname, right? Well, they've merged. And that's where the problem is, because um, you'll find even in Canada, um, we only have one province that's civil law, yet we have civil courts all the way through. And it's because of this legal status surname title um, that has come into effect. Uh, it's not really well at times, uh, you know, shall we say, define the way it should be to show why this is happening. But there is a mingling in there of the civil law. Uh, we call the birth registration system a civil law registration. Uh, the uh, There really would have been no point for a common law or a, what we call that type of registration uh, because of the fact is it wouldn't really at times have included uh, the use of additions of legal surnames um, because there was no need of an addition or a name added to a man's name by description, legal description, uh, you know, at the time really prior to them wanting to institute this head tax system, so to speak. Um, but the Romans had done it. Uh, there is some evidence of this type of, uh, you know, legal title, you know, happening even in uh, China. Uh, appears the earliest record of a surname seems to begin there under Emperor Fu, F-U, um, but um, the, uh, uh, you know, there is a confusion in there because this is what's happening. So when you're going into a court, just say a standard court that I've seen, the name on the docket is generally reflective of a civil birth registration system. We refer to people as civilians. Uh, a civilian would have to have a civil status legal title surname uh, that they would be using in civilian uh, activity. Um, on its own, the civil status title, the surname, uh, is really just an arms. That's why in the military, they're just generally referring to an officer in the army, mainly under only his last name. Just as a police officer, if his last name is Smith, he's known as Officer Smith. Uh, we, we generally don't really put any emphasis on their given names. But... Um, the uh, uh, the two is being mixed up together. So going into a court, um, it is is dealing with a civil status bond. Civil also has to do with money. If we're looking for a settlement regarding anything outside of criminal law, criminal law, um, you know, outside of that, if there's a, a criminal charge laid and someone wins in a criminal court, uh, it's usually a slam dunk to go after the individual uh, that's been charged criminally, uh, that's caused damage to someone bearing legal title. You, they're able to get a civil damage and civil leads to the money. Um, so when we're really looking at anything to do with money, uh, even the word coin, quite interestingly, coin leads to the word to needle. Uh, it's, it's interesting that all these words are connected. So uh, maybe we have to look at things that there's a, somehow a coinciding or a coinciding, a coin kill happening at the time of birth, some type of accident where two things are merging together that don't belong. Um, you have truth mixing with fiction. So this legal memory um, had to come into being because they were going to operate a population that was going to build that had nothing to do with belief uh, in Jesus Christ or being a good individual. They were all going to be in legal persona um, operating under nations that have no covenant with God, um, with various types of governmental backgrounds, democracy, you know, communism, 
uh, socialism, whatever it would be, dictatorship. But these were all under a legal, uh, you know, requirement of civil status of all its subjects. And it was the way to tag it and to use them, uh, you know, for some kind of commercial value. So uh, if we see all this together, we know what's going on. A good read, if anybody uh, ever gets a chance to look into the, the, this is called the Domesday Book, but it was called the Doomsday Book. It's a judgment book of judgment debtors. Uh, and it's all based on uh, the cataloging of the crown or the monarchies when they were actually uh, putting down registry systems for people holding land that the crown uh, basically was receiving income from. And uh, therefore, they listed, surprisingly, um, all those who were subjects under the land uh, holders, they were listing them as even villains uh, because they were carrying these legal appellations, which are called discriminative titles. So they're in a judgment doomsday book because they're not yet in the book of life for having accepted Christ. And therefore, there would be no need for them to be noted in that or they would not be the servants of men anymore, as uh, we were told not to be, according to uh, Paul's words in Scripture in Corinthians so or, or in Romans. So we have to look at what what's going on, but we got to be very careful um, that uh, we're not taking a blinder uh, to research. It's sitting out in front, interestingly, to have a book called the Doomsday Book, um, which sounds like a judgment debtor book ahead of time for those that have not come to being in the book of life. So you're either going to be in the book of the dead or you're going to be in the book of the living. And until one is uh, having made the election sure with the highest authority uh, and his son, Jesus Christ, uh, we're deemed to be a legal person until redeemed a disciple and subject of Jesus Christ, who has been freed and liberated from legal bondage. All right, Dan, thank you.